There's a brand new anime out, but you can't actually watch it. That's right. Despite being an original anime from the same studio as Comey Can't Communicate and The Apothecary Diaries, there was an anime that was skipped by Crunchyroll, and High Dive, and Netflix, and Hulu, and Vudu, and Peacock, and Shudder, and point being, not a single site was willing to license it. So, unless you feel like committing a crime today, the only way you can legally learn about this series is by subscribing to me and watching this video, because my video falls under fair use, I think. Don't quote me, I'm not a lawyer. Regardless, if this show has a popular anime studio and talented staff behind it, why did no one decide to license it? Well, after watching the first episode, I can kind of see why. So let's discuss this season's most tragic anime, The Way of Pon. The anime opens with Not Nino getting kicked out of her house for being too loud, followed by a bunch of yelling and screaming. Lovely. We are then introduced to Not Yotsuba. And wait a second, don't these girls look kind of familiar? Well, that's because the character designer is none other than Negi Haruba, the author and illustrator of the quintessential quintuplets. And when I found that out, I was even more shocked the series wasn't picked up. Because while the quints are iconic for a lot more than just their looks, it is no secret that cute anime girls can carry a series to popularity. So if your character designer is the creator of one of the most popular harem series, how boring of a topic could this anime possibly have that no one gave it a chance? Well, after getting kicked out of her house, Nashiko's father allows her to hang out at his old game parlor instead. And after stumbling upon a mysterious golden tile, it turns into a magical mahjong spirit. Yep, as it turns out, this anime is about the traditional Chinese tile game known as mahjong. Not exactly a super super marketable topic outside of Asia or old people. So you can begin to see the licensor's logic here. However, it's not like having a niche topic completely blocks your series from becoming popular. Even within the very niche board game anime genre, I have seen not one, but two different anime about shogi. And for the record, I don't even know how to play regular chess. So shogi, also known as Japanese chess, is a complete unknown for me. Nevertheless, while I'm fairly certain most of the Western audience also doesn't know about Shogi. Both March Comes In Like a Lion and When Will Ayamu Make His Move are reviewed pretty positively on my anime list, with March Comes In Like a Lion being listed among the top 300 for both rank and popularity. So once again, add in the cute anime girl tax, and The Way of Pun should still have a chance at popularity in the West, right? Well, to see where this anime went wrong, it's important to highlight where the other two succeeded. March comes in like a lion dissects the complicated relationship one can have with their passion and the isolation you can feel once you've mastered your craft. Being simultaneously praised and ostracized for his talents, Ray's internal battle with Shogi becomes just as important as the games themselves. And with these dramatic moments of self-reflection being accompanied by glimpses into his slowly blossoming social life, the series feels more like a character study than a Shogi anime. And although they do take time to discuss Shogi's strategy and detail the moves each player makes in later episodes, the show's first episode dedicates nearly all of its time to showing Rei and the people around him. And the choice to set the stage before showing games in depth is really important, as you're given a protagonist to root for, and even if you don't quite understand what's going on, you're still able to resonate with the character's emotions, creating a reason to watch the games beyond the shogi itself. So ultimately, while shogi is still an incredibly important topic within March Comes In Like a Lion, it's first and foremost a series of about love, family, and coping with loss. So with that being said, it's basically the Your Lion April of Shogi. And if you don't get that reference, just be mentally prepared with a box of tissues in hand if you ever plan on watching it. But a board game anime doesn't have to be melancholy or deeply profound for it to be good. And when will Ayumu make his move elects for a completely different strategy. Instead of centering around a troubled Shogi genius, this anime is about a Shogi noob that in the grand scheme of things, doesn't really care about Shogi. Because of this, the anime focuses instead on the relationship between its two main characters, with Shogi simply being the force that unites them. Essentially, Ayumu is a simp, and despite being a kendo champion, he suddenly quits the team to join the Shogi Club, an unofficial school organization run by the adorable Urushi. And although Ayumu makes his crush on her pretty obvious, he refuses to confess to her until he beats her in a game of Shogi. However, since Urushi is a Shogi master, it's gonna be a while until he can confess. This 
leads to a show full of flirting without a whole lot of romantic progression. But you can immediately see why this show would have a broad appeal. It's basically your typical will they won't they show, but with the unique framing device of being based around a shogi club. You enter each episode hoping it will finally be the time that Ayamu can win and pour his heart out, which gives you a level of investment in their games, when deep down, you know it's not gonna happen and they're just gonna repeat the cycle in the next episode. But because the series is filled with heartwarming moments and constantly evolving friendship dynamics, you never feel cheated by Urushi's ability to dominate the game. And once again, by giving me likable characters I want to root for, I found myself interested in a series about a game that I still don't know how to play. You would think that after watching two Shogi series, I would have some semblance on how to play. But no, I, I still have no idea. So if these two series could make a foreign board game work for a Western audience, why did The Way of Pawn fail to make its way overseas? Well, it's not exactly a good sign for your show if I spend half the video dedicated to it not talking about the show. I mean, sure, the character designs are good and the animation is fine enough for the most part. We'll get to the ugly aspects soon enough, but the show fails to make the viewer care about what's being animated. The only bit of Nashiko's personality we get to see in the first episode is right at the start, where they show her loudly dancing to one of her favorite idol groups. This five second cutaway was enough to get my hopes up to think that maybe there was something to this anime, that maybe each girl would be fleshed out with their own personality traits. But no, this is the only glimpse into a personality we get for any of the girls in the first episode. And while I'm being harsh on the writing towards Nashiko, it's even worse for Izumi, the third girl to get introduced. You do not learn a single thing about her in the show's first two episodes. And the only purpose she serves is to teach the girls the game of Mahjong, which is dumb because we already had a magical Mahjong bird that could have done that. But apparently, despite playing the games with them, Chunbo can only talk to Nashiko, which forces there to be another character to explain the rules of the game. And it is done in such a lazy way. They literally dump 95% of the game's initial rules into one expositional scene with minimal animation. But even if it was done in a more creative way, throwing this many Mahjong terms at you in the first episode is a bold move. Whereas the other two anime focused on creating likable characters and setting the stage of the series, I barely even know who these girls are. So why would I care for the explanation of a tile game that my grandma plays? But there's gotta be a plot somewhere, right? The other two shows weren't just about shogi, so this anime can't possibly be just about mahjong, right? Well, no, it's basically just about mahjong. The first episode consists of Nashiko getting kicked out of her house, going to the game parlor, and playing mahjong. End of episode. After 23 minutes, there are no stakes, no drama between characters, and no strong personality traits I can attribute to the character. It's truly a shame and a waste of potential. The second episode gets a little bit better, as it begins with Nashiko's introduction to the fourth girl, Rishi, who's at least given a half-baked origin story, and this is gonna be a shocking revelation, but Rishi is a rich international girl. Get it? Because her name sounds like Rit. The second episode also confirms my greatest fear, which is that the uncanny animation I alluded to earlier will make reappearances whenever they play Mahjong. It's a really strange choice to do this, because the staff clearly cares about the art direction of the show. Some of the other Mahjong shots look perfectly fine, and the anime even takes the time and effort to parody the art style of other shows. This includes the extremely obvious and obligatory JoJo's reference, but there are also nods to other other classic series like Kaiji, which really surprised me. Other than these small pockets of inspiration, the rest of the anime is incredibly basic. Homie Can't Communicate and The Apothecary Diaries are two amazing, well-written and adapted series. So I really don't know why they would follow it up with such a bland original anime. And while there were a lot of talented staff on this project, there's no one to credit for the actual creation of the series itself, which is really, really weird. Ultimately, while The Way of Pawn had a lot going going for it on the surface, clearly the licensors knew something that I didn't because I now see why it wasn't picked up. There's just not enough there. It's basically a glorified Mahjong tutorial. And although the second episode did provide glimmers of hope that the series could evolve as the episodes go on, unless the show adds some real stakes, I'm probably gonna have to skip the rest of this one. But what series should I be watching? And what do you want me to talk about next? Let me know in the comments below.